try it on a Christian. Mm. I was brought up in a Christian family, but it was when I was 11 that I really understood what Jesus had done for me. So I remember asking Jesus to come into my heart when I was 11, and I got baptised when I was 13. Right. Um, then I began to backslide and fall away from God, and I used to live a, like a worldly life. One foot in the world, one foot in church, until I was 18. And when I was 18, I fell in a crevasse in Switzerland. You went into I fell in a, I was snowboarding in Switzerland. Okay. And I was going down the mountain, and I did a jump, thinking I'd land on the other side. And I landed in a crevasse, and I slid into the crevasse. Oh, no. And I had like a wall of ice in front of me, a wall of ice behind me, and I slid in. And when I landed, I stopped on like a bridge of snow, and I looked to the right, and it was dark. And I looked to the left, and it was dark, and went down. And I, I, at that moment, I thought I wasn't living right. But like, yeah. you can't live like one, one foot, like just living like a sinner. Yeah. And one foot, like, like you're believed. So I repented, you know. And I, the next year, I went to Kenya, and I served in the church there. And then I, when I was there, I felt God tell me to go to Turkey. God told you to? to I felt okay. God tell me to go to Turkey. So I started learning Turkish. So I went and did a degree, an oral degree, a secular degree, and then I went to Turkey. How do you discern what is from God, what's not from God? I like? was fasting, I was praying, and I felt like they're kind of directing my spirit, like a tug almost, like God tugging me in a certain direction. And I felt I want to do it. And it was like, not just I want a Virgo worm one. Like so you just felt like there spirit. was a pull? Yes, that's right. So I went and started learning Turkish. Um, I went to Turkey and I served in a church there uh, for a few years. And we lived in Turkey for seven years. I met my wife there and she's from Azerbaijan. So I have like family in the Middle East. Uh, um, yeah, so that's my journey. And what I did today, I come to get a Quran because I read Quran in PDF. And I wanted to understand, like in the Bible, when you have this, this kind of story format, so you have like God talks to Abraham and they have a discussion, and you see like God is relational, so he's like talking, Abraham's questioning, God answers, and then God is kind of, like you said about journey, journey is really important, Abraham was on a journey, so he had to leave Ur of the Chaldeans, God said I'll take you to a place which you're going to inherit, and there's like a process, his faith gradually builds and builds, and then he offers his son, you know, like a foreshadowing of God offering his son, and gradually, like God reveals himself more and more and more, and in the end, God calls him his friend. So, you know, in the Quran, what I'm trying to do is I read the Quran. It's like sound bites, like it's a bit of information, bit of information, and it kind of seems to me to jump around a bit. But I've only just started reading, and I'm going to read more. I want to read the whole Quran. I've read probably of twenty. It's not a very small portion. So I'm just trying to compare the Bible, because the Bible is written in kind of a bit more logical form. So I just want to try and understand my framing, like how does God speak to Muslim? How do you, how do you feel God speaks to you? Yeah, so f firstly, the Bible and the Quran, they're fundamentally different books. Yeah. Like the Bible um, is claimed to be divinely inspired. Yeah, it, uh, I haven't come across a Christian that says it's the word of God. They say, you know, certain individuals, they were inspired um, and these individuals wrote about what they heard. In fact, not all of the four Gospels authors were even present at the time of Jesus. So, um, like two of them wrote from somebody else who was present. So there's that kind of, uh, it's very human centric. Human beings typically when they write, they write beginning, middle, end, and it depends who they're writing to. For example, if you look in the Gospel of Luke, right in the first paragraph in the Gospel of Luke, he makes it clear who he's writing to. Um, the person, I forget his name. To Theophilus. Uh, yeah, I think that, Theophilus yeah. Theophilus means, Theophilus means lover of God. Yeah. Theo is God, and Philus is lover, of, you know, like to love. Yeah. So actually, although it's written to one person called Theophilus, it's also written to anyone who is a lover of God. That's, that's an interpretation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's an well, interpretation. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. he was writing to one person, or maybe he, it was just a name he used to address everyone. But there's a sense that Luke, being a doctor, went and did a studious, uh, you know, like a deep study of Jesus' life. Because he went and interviewed, like, Mary, mother of Jesus. But th and, and that's, that's where I would say that there's a bit of a difference. Eh? Yeah. Well, a big yeah, difference. Yeah, I understand yeah. what you're saying. So, for yeah. example, the Quran, you've got the sound bites, and they're like, 
is God directly, Allah di directly dictating them? I mean, I know Gabriel tells Muhammad to write them down, yeah? Is that right? Every single thing that's in the Quran is the word of God. Yeah, okay. From beginning to end. Yeah. It's all the word of God. We don't believe anyone in, was inspired or this and that. Yes, in the process, you got Gabriel uh, who recited it to the Prophet, who then narrated it to the companions. However, the Quran, we believe from beginning to end is the word of God. There's no, this individual gave his own words, his own interpretation, or that's how he framed it, or it depends on manuscripts. So that's what we believe pertaining the Quran. And when we read the Quran, we read it in its original language. Yeah, in Arabic. Like, That's what's... what I was saying to the friend Omar yeah. over there. I said, like, I understand Turkish, but I can, uh, there are fragments of Arabic in Turkish. Do you speak Turkish or not? No, no you look like you might be. Okay. Um, He's just another random brown guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I love I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I'm from Pakistan, but... Oh, I'm learning Urdu. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. But you know, Urdu means order. Uh, it means army. Army. Urdu means army. Okay. In Turkish, Urdu is the army. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's good you said Turkish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, in Urdu, yeah, doesn't yeah, mean yeah. that. Urdu, Urdu is like a Turkish language. So I'm going to learn. Okay. Yeah, because I learn Turkish, so I know Turkish. But I want to learn Urdu as well. Yeah, 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 it's why, cool. not? why not? Yeah, it's lovely. I love it. It's like Persian and Arabic. Why have you learned in Urdu? Mixed. Give me some Urdu. I haven't. I haven't. I just mean I'm um, David Boy. Is that right? Say that again. Mir Miranam David. Yeah, Hi. that means my name. Yeah, 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 That's it. Milka yeah. something. I can't remember. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was saying that the the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, the New Testament. Do you know the language that the New Testament is written in? Yeah. Like the original manuscripts. Would you know the original language? Well, part of it's written in Hebrew. No, Some the New Testament. Written. Oh, New Testament Greek. Koine Greek, right? I don't know Greek. Yeah, Koine Greek. So, but Jesus spoke Aramaic and we believe as Muslims that when God sends a prophet, he sends the prophet in the language of the people. So if Jesus speaking Aramaic, surely, yeah, no, it's just a nice conversation. I think we should celebrate good conversations. As long as the pastors sincere, bounce off each other. If the sincerity goes, then we should go. Uh, that's, so, saying, that's yeah. my so in Greek, you so, have yeah. an issue where it's Jesus is speaking Aramaic. Yeah. However, it's been written down in Greek. Yeah. So there's that Aramaic, but his people don't like it's written in Greek, but the people don't necessarily speak Greek. Um, and then today it's written in English, and there's like three grades of translation, translational um, shift. Whilst the Quran is in Arabic, can be accessed in Arabic. Arabic is actually a live language today. It's the top four, fifth spoken language on the planet, whilst Aramaic, according to UNESCO, is uh, endangered language, which I find it very perplexing. If people believe that Jesus is God, um, then why would the language that Jesus came with be endangered? Why are people not learning it more? Uh, and especially, you've got people adding things. Um, just elaborate. When the Holy Spirit came, well, after Jesus had risen, the disciples spoke in different tongues. So they spoke, and people coming to Jerusalem heard the words of God in their own language, and they were coming from all over the Roman Empire. So there's a supernatural revelation as well. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about the right language. Yeah. There is also like where God. Himself, but that can't be measured. That's the only problem. No, no, no. But that's why it's a miracle where these guys, they came to Jerusalem, they heard the words of God in their own language. So what's better if someone has to learn Arabic? Not, not, I'm not insulting Arabic yeah. and I really appreciate and I love the characters. I think this must be a beautiful language to know. Um, but when these guys came, somehow God jumped the gap. It's like lightning jumping between cables. I don't think so. It kind of told, you know. Because so the manuscripts we have yeah, yeah, yeah. is in Greek. Yeah. The, the, that occasion you're talking about hasn't been um, ha hasn't been preserved such that people, you know, down the line can test that claim. It sounds all well and good, but the oldest manuscripts that we have are Greek manuscripts, yeah. and that's of Erasmus. Yeah. And even Erasmus, the work that he's done, and what Jerome's done, and the thing is, uh, the language plays a very big part when it comes to preservation of text. And even if you look at the Codex Vaticanus, Codex Vaticanus in the book of Hebrews on the side in the margin, 
the scribe was so frustrated with people just adding bits and bobs in and taking stuff out. His actual quote there is, fool and naive, leave the original text, don't add to it. So when it comes to the Quran, that can never even be dreamt of being done to the Quran. It's been preserved so well. When, when the disciples believed in Jesus, they had the book, yeah? They had the Old Testament. Is that the book that they had? Well, the because the Greek is, term is euangelion. That's, no, that's the book the that... No, no, that's, that's... That's what Jesus that's had. That's the gospel. So the gospel is the message that Jesus saves. So he had a gospel, isn't it? Yeah, that he saves. He died for our sins and heals. But not the gospel that yeah. you have so today. The, the disciples, the book they had, is the Old Testament and the book that Christians still have is the Old Testament and that's been preserved because even you but the disciples the Testament, but right? the disciples wrote many years after Jesus yeah, isn't they it still believed the Old Testament but think so about when it Stephen was being yeah. martyred he only quoted from the Old Testament and that was enough for the Pharisees to kill him he said Moses said I will send a, a prophet like like me from my brothers yeah and Deuteronomy 1818. Yeah, well so, so Peter. But we say Peter, that's so alluding sorry. to the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, so Stephen. This we Someone drop some money. Yeah, five p. So a lot of money around here. Mm -hmm. So if it, so, Stephen, even Stephen, he pointed to the Old Testament. So the gospel was what is in the Old Testament, like the you know the, the requirement for a lamb, the sacrifice of Abraham's son on Mount Moriah. It's the gospel, basically, that God will provide the lamb. Let, so, me just, let me just clarify, the gospel that Jesus was preaching, are you saying that was the Old Testament? Well, Jesus says, I've come to preach good news to the poor. Yeah, that was the gospel, good news to the poor. The poor... So was uh, that the Old Testament then? Well, it was, he, he, yeah, Isaiah 61. Because so from what I read, it was a different book. Jesus said this, this is Jesus' gospel from Isaiah. Siri thinks I'm talking to it. But it's, it's, I, I really like the, the, the inquiry, it's really good. Um, so in Isaiah 61, in Isaiah 61, the English Standard Version, the Spirit, of, and this is what Jesus says in Luke 2. When he stands up in the synagogue, he opens the scroll, Isaiah the scroll, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. So people were held in bondage, like in their lives. They were held by demons, they were held by sickness, and Jesus came to set the captives free. So where there were people who were possessed by demons, there was a man, he was mad. So what book he was, was he preaching? That, he that was preaching verse on Isaiah. The, but in, according to 61, Mark 2. 1, 14, yeah. it says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel. Yeah. And the word used is euangelion, which translates to mean revelation. Yes. So my question is, which gospel? Because Matthew, Mark, Luke and John came after Jesus. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But again, I'm just going to point back, all right? So, um, when Jesus goes into the temple, yeah, he does open Isaiah. He comes out of the, uh, he comes out of the desert, and that, the gospel, yeah. is that he has come to set the captives free. So, for example, if you're someone and you suffer with addiction, you know, maybe you're alcoholic, maybe you're addicted to gambling, pornography, the gospel is that Jesus sets you free. So in the power of the name of Jesus, he can break that addiction. And that's the gospel. So the gospel is not necessarily a book. The gospel is freedom, that proclamation of freedom. The proclamation of deliverance from Satan. But that's so, not what the Greek means, though. The Greek means revelation. Yeah, well, it's, it's still a revelation because it's like God showing through Jesus his deliverance. On the one hand, if you're saying, oh, it means freedom, but on the other hand, yeah. it could mean revelation. Well, I don't know saying, how you can reconcile the both. I'm just saying how I understand it. I'm just saying like the idea that the New Testament is is like the Quran. I think is not how I understand the gospel. The gospel is. I the didn't good say news. that. I yeah. said they're very different. 
Sorry, that's, I thought that's what you said. No, no, no. I said at the beginning that they're very different. And then I, I, I compared both. I said, look, one yeah. is in Arabic. We read the Arabic. Yeah, yeah. The other one, it's, it's, uh, we have manuscripts not in the language of yeah, what yeah. the language Jesus preached. Yeah, yeah. And then I was talking about the preservation of it. And if I was to continue with that, I would say that we have manuscripts that are dating to the time of the Prophet. So no one can come and say, oh, this yeah, was yeah, added yeah. in, this was taken out. Yeah. There's no manuscript dating to the time of Jesus. Okay. In fact, the earliest complete manuscript, somewhat complete yeah. manuscript, like 300 yeah, years yeah. after Jesus. So for, for example, for a Muslim, you would say that if it was written and copied and written and copied perfectly, that would be proof that it's, it's kind of not been corrupted and you have the old one that corroborates that. Yeah, there's, okay. that's one aspect of our argument because there's other ways we can evidence that the Quran hasn't been changed. Yeah. For example, from the beginning of when the Quran was revealed, the Quran was memorized yeah. till today. Yeah. There hasn't been a break in the chain. Yeah, okay. yeah. So children as young as six memorize the Quran from cover to cover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We don't see that when it comes to the Vedas, the Old Testament, the New Testament. They're not memorized cover to cover yeah, yeah, yeah. as uh, an so, entire so culture or Christian, identity. As a Christian, my comparison would be that people have been delivered from demons people have been healed from the time of Jesus. So since the time of Jesus, there's been a continuation of miracles, healing, deliverances, setting the captives free. After Jesus, yeah? Yeah, yeah even to this day. What sort of miracle? Deliverance, setting free from, being set free from Satan's power. That doesn't sound like a miracle. Being delivered from, the, the man who couldn't, yeah. wasn't in his right mind, and he was running around naked, I saw one of the guys around here like that mad you know the captive the blind eyes being open you know the lame walking. and then someone recited the bible and he was fine no no so i'm saying that that has been a continuation and that's still happening today like those kind of miracles are happening I, I don't understand what you mean the miracles so so, so somebody that's, that's walking around so that's the gospel the gospel is you not could just book. have a psychological problem but i must also say that the four gospels which are eyewitness accounts are not weaker than one account so here's what I'm saying, David. So it's a kind of confirmation. It's like four. I, I get that. I get that. Well, the thing is, you know, when religious people compare miracles, yeah, yeah. miracles are very subjective. They can't necessarily be measured. Yes, it's based upon the person, him or herself, yeah. that has experienced it, and they can give their account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, when it comes to scripture, like no Christian can say, "I learned about Jesus outside of the scripture." I learned about the resurrection of Jesus outside of the scripture. Okay, so like all you, of that, all of that, just one sec, all yeah, of yeah. that was learnt from scripture. So I'm saying that if you learnt that from scripture, then that's where we need to start our discussion from. Authentication of the scripture. And you need to prove to me that, for example, the Protestants will have 66 books, Catholics will have 73 books. There's like four different versions of Bibles with entire books, chunks of chapters, uh, creedal disproving tendencies, okay. missing and present, which I think it's, it's worrying. And that's where the like, miracles are fair enough. But scripture is something that we would give to you and you would give to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and okay. it would be interesting yeah. which, which version of the Bible would you give to me to read yeah, or sure. would you recommend the viewers okay. to read? Which so version? The confirmation I have about scripture is very simple. I believe the same book as the Jews. Just out of interest, which version of the Bible would you recommend uh, I me believe, to? I believe the, the Torah, the Tevrat. Is that the version, yeah, and the Tevrat? I believe the Zebul and I believe the Prophets. That's not what I asked though. Yeah, I said, yeah. what it's version the of the Bible should I read? The Jews read King James the Version, New International Version, what? English Standard Version, which would you recommend me? King James is fine, there might be a, you know, a couple of things in there, but you know... What does that mean, a couple the of things English in it? English Standard Version, whichever one you like. When you, you say know? King James Version, there's a couple of things in it, what do you mean by that? Okay, for example, some people live in Essex. In? Some, in Essex. Right. Some people live in Kingston upon Thames. Some people live in Harrow. And they all talk different. Indeed. You know, so you need to understand the Bible as it's intended. You know, you need to get the most out of it. If you're reading the Bible and you don't really, you know, maybe it's King James. Like, what's no? But what do you mean? There's something inside it, though. It. So, 
the different translations of the Bible don't differ in the message that Jesus sets the captives free. They don't differ in the message that Jesus rose from the dead and you need to believe on him for forgiveness of your sins. What differs is the syntax. The syntax, like if I'm talking What about to when you, he said, uh, let those that have way. sinned cast the first yeah. stone? That's yeah. in the KJV, it's not in the NIV. Okay, what does it say in the NIV? In the NIV, it's been taken out. So, let he who sinned... Yeah, what? cast the first stone. Don't cast the first stone. Well, we, whichever. Well, whoever wrote the NIV. Whichever version you follow. the NIV, we're too sensitive. Because that's what Jesus said, I understand. Like, if you're without sin... Well, they believe there's no manuscript that's credible no. that has that. Well, not so many people using the NIV at the moment. The one that is, tends to be mainstream is ESV. And that's just one verse. It's the first time about. someone said that to me at Speaker's Corner. Yeah, yeah. It's normally either KJV uh, NIV, or NIV. I don't, read, I don't particularly read the NIV. I read King James, like the King James, 15 or 11 or whenever it's written. And it still has resonance, still tells me the well, gospel. When you say NIV is a bit sensitive, yeah, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah. So when it comes to like strong faith, sometimes it's a little bit softened. And it doesn't really give God enough credit for what he's done sometimes. So but, but that's the problem, isn't it? Why, why do you guys even tolerate different versions of the Bible yeah. that are sending a different message. Why is this acceptable amongst Christians? I, I also like to read the Greek. So I use Bible Hub, you know, I read the... Read Can Greek. you read Greek? Well, I read the Greek next to the English parallel translation. So can you read Greek? Well, I, I can read the Greek that's next the to translation the translation of the Greek. And I can, ex I can interrogate the word. So if I want to, I can dig deep. You mean it's you look at the Greek and then you, you check what the English equivalent I'll show you, I'll show you. is? Yeah, so I can I can kind of break down. Okay, I'd love it. to see you read the Greek. I, I, don't, I just like so. For example, say I'm reading. I mean, obviously, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What does upon me? You know, what do you mean upon me? How can the spirit be upon me? So then you read the Greek, yeah? So I go to the Greek. If I have a question like that, right. I interrogate the original. I kind of try and find out. Well, what did it? What does that Greek word mean? And. Why did they use that word in that context? And then I get better understanding of the Bible. And that's yeah, yeah, yeah. what a Bible scholar should do. I'd love to hear the Greek. Yeah, so... So I just find the reference in... But it's good. You're yeah, right, yeah. So I'm looking daps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and also it has all the Old Testament as well in Hebrew. So oh, you can read Hebrew as well, yeah? Well, I can look at the Hebrew and I can look at the word. That's translation though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, I'm not a Greek scholar. I didn't say you were. But, but the resources yeah. are available to me to dig deeper. So if I have a query, I can like really find out what the original... Isn't that what the translators yeah. have done though? Well, They've English, just looked at the... I'm not Greek, am I? Yeah, when you say you read the Greek, it seems a bit deceptive. I say, I read the Greek, when you just hover over it and you just find out the English for that specific word, and then you just so, look at the so English. for example here, like, um, Jesus then returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Yeah, I've oh. seen that website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good website. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good resource for me, you know? Like, because I'm not a Greek scholar, but I can still, like, be, have a good, honest discussion with the text. So you um, can look at the translation of certain Greek words. That's just yeah, reading yeah. the English translation. Yeah, is... but that's, I still think that there's a transparency there, which is useful. So although the, although like the King, you know, you've got King James, you've got the different versions. And sometimes yeah. I read the Bible. So many versions. Sometimes I read the Bible in Turkish or sometimes I look on the different. Yeah. To see like, what can I get? What more can I, what nuance can I get? It doesn't, it gives me a kind of ritual experience of the Bible because I can. Because there's so many I, different versions. Yeah. Well, I think that's a disadvantage though. You know when is it though, or are we just? Are I would we just say in, so. Are we just trying to understand it? I mean, there's many universities teaching the same subject. It doesn't mean they are teaching something different. It no, but they have to follow the same curriculum, though. Yeah, yeah. And but if I'm, I'm quite strict, doctrinally, I'm yeah. quite strict, and I always try to be quite pure. You're trinitarian or unitarian? Uh, I'm trinitarian, not okay. unitarian. So, but there are. I meet some unitarians as well, yeah. and they'll use the Bible and they say this is something yeah, that we've yeah, got goodness. from the Bible. I don't know how they do it. But then they've, they'll give you evidences from the Bible as well, where Jesus is talking about the Father and... Are you a native Arabic speaker? Uh, not native, no. I've learned Arabic. So you've had to work really hard to learn Arabic? It, I mean, nowadays you can le learn languages if you really want to in a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. You can kind of get into it. There's so many apps nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So that's why when you said Greek, I didn't think it was outlandish, but I haven't come across yeah. a Christian that comes to speak a and says, I know Koinea Greek. Oh, no, I don't know. And, but I, yeah. I'm using the app. 
like you say, there's a lot of apps. Yeah. And, um, no, but here we're yeah. we're learning and reading the actual Arabic. Yeah. Like I can inna a'atina kal Yeah, that's cool. Fasalli li rabbika yeah, yeah, yeah. wanhar. I'm just giving you an well, example. I'm, I'm, I've got the English translation of the Quran, which I I'm gonna treat it like it's not as pure as it could be. But or, I'm still or, gonna read it, and then or, I'm or even Jesus when he's understand what's going on. or even when Jesus is on the cross. Yeah. I'd like to know what he said in his native language Eloi, and even Eloi be Eloi yeah, Lima my, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. So even when Jesus speaks Aramaic, it's in the Bible as a translation in the Greek. So we all know without a shadow of a doubt. And then he says, it is finished. That's the only one that so, I've seen. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so there you go, no Aramaic. It's not quite dead language. Yeah. It's still got some life in it. No, no, not dead, endangered. Oh. According to UNESCO, you yeah, can check yeah. this yourself. Yeah, that's cool. For me, I want Aramaic to be learnt by people because I want religion to be presented in its purest form. Yeah. So I'm not going to celebrate when it becomes you know what the purest form of that, that when it is. would when it would be taken away. Form I want Aramaic to be learnt. It yeah. makes me sad, but it also makes me concerned why people don't care about it enough to learn it. The purest form of Christianity is when a believer today puts their hands on a sick person and they're healed. That's pure Christianity. So we need them in the yeah. NHS then. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But that is. The, like when you're looking for purity, you say, okay, the language, yes, yeah, the language, but it's also the template of Jesus' life. He, he demonstrated a life for believers to follow, like to raise the dead, you know, to, to open the eyes of blind. That's, that's really... If, if, if I bring so, a disabled person here, would you be able to cure him? I, I could pray for him. I'll be willing to pray for him. Because you're talking about curing people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, proper healing, like yeah. in the wheelchair. No, Listen, I'll just pray for you. Listen, for me, I will pray for them. It's, Would it heal them, though? It, yeah, I mean, that's there have been tests where people have been tested like this, you know, in the past. So if I bring somebody, you'll heal them? I'm not going to heal them. Jesus is going to heal them. Okay? Right through you. That's what you're saying. Well, Jesus promised. He said, if you lay your hands on the, when you lay your hands on the sick, they'll recover. Okay? And he says, I give you authority over demons. With respect, then, yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why are... Why don't I see a flood yeah, yeah, of Christians yeah. you should. rescuing the NHS? You should. You should. When people are getting six yeah, yeah. month slots for appointments, yeah, 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 yeah. they just need Chris. Um, and and when I go to, you know, you know the certain hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I go to certain yeah, yeah, hospitals, yeah, yeah. and they've got like a little chapel there, mostly it's empty. Yeah, it's dead religion. That's because it's dead religion. If there is, if you have a need. But if it's curing people, so why is it dead religion? If you do have someone who's sick. Yeah. I'm pray sick, I've got a bit of a sore throat. Okay, I'll just pray for you. <laughs> Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for Zishan, that you heal his sore throat, in Jesus' name. Not gonna lie, it's still there. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine, you'll see. I trust God, I trust God for healing. Thank you for letting me pray for you, it's a privilege. No, 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 it's... And I wanted today, I wanted, that's why I came down today, I felt like I want to show that faith in Jesus for people to get an answer to prayer, to get something tangible, to be a proof producer, not just to kind of like have an argument about scripture, but actually like to pray for someone with a need. So like financially, like, uh, you know, breakthrough, uh, deliverance, if you have like oppression, if someone is like always under heaviness or like always kind of struggling mentally. That's everyone, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we only pray, but that's, that's, the life. Kind of, that's the gospel you see, like for Jesus. Which gospel to, though? <laughs> Do you see it? It comes back to the don't same thing. You. That's why I started the conversation with that. Bless you nice speaking to you. And may you find strength and health. Thank you, brother. May Allah guide you and may Allah guide thank me. You, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. Take care. Take care.